so I started skating at the age of about seven. And I think, if I remember correctly, I think that my sister wanted to go ice skating and I went with her. Very quickly, I just kept wanting to do it and I skated from seven to 15, 16, every morning, five hours before school, like very competitive. Basically after I quit, I think I was able to just like step away from the culture of it and really return to the thing that when I was seven was magnetic to me, which was about how you say all these things without verbal language and how your body shows you what it can do. I'm hard of hearing and I wear hearing aids in both ears and almost all of this comes from this experience of my hearing and my relationship to sound. My work became much more focused on like issues of sound and hearing in my mid-twenties when I started to like really realize just the level of, I guess like frustration that I experienced in sort of daily interactions. And so I started thinking about and exploring sound a lot more. It's just become this entire medium to me to work with. And I, I find it really inspiring and kind of endless. Like just the experiences that I have with it, they're daily. It's not something I just like turn on or turn off. I heard this news story about some tuba thefts in LA at a high school. And then I heard another one and I was like, what? This is the weirdest phenomenon. And this like theft of sound seemed really resonant. And I just kept picturing these kids in band practice with nothing to do. It's an amazing story, like just that these huge instruments with this huge sound are missing. Remember, shh, the spot where we go down to a piano, clarinets are bringing it out, percussion really soft. Okay, really soft, especially the bass drums. I think when they came, they just had caps on. When they came out, they had ski masks on. Wow, yeah. so two men. Two guys, yeah, I don't know what age. They left the cases behind. What they did is they got them, uh, took them apart, and they put them in uh, the big garbage bags, the hefty bags. They were in really good shape, those horns. I'm sure they could get at least $2,000, maybe more. You work really hard and, and you do the best you can to get all the best instruments for your kids and then somebody thinks that they can just, hey, you know, it doesn't matter. We'll just take these instruments and sell them and they have no, no conscience, I guess. The project that I'm currently working on is called The Tuba Thieves. It is a full-length narrative film and also a series of sculptures and objects based on listening to three musical scores that I commissioned from three different composers. I made them lists of references to consider and then asked them to create a score based on the list of references. So I was basically like scoring their score. I gave Steve a list that included a poem by David Wagner, asked him to look at the artwork of Sophie Tauber Arp. I specifically asked him to look at the patterns that a Zamboni makes as it goes around and cleans the ice because it's a really specific pattern. Zamboni, you know, it's slowly moving. I mean, it's the perfect illustration of minimal music. You know, it's just like perfect, beautiful repetition and things get like rolled over and then drawn again. To me, it was like, here's a gift. Here's some images and some text, and you can do whatever you want with it. And so 
I feel like because I'm inserting myself into your work that there has to be a conversation between the two things. I can't just take this stuff and do with it the way I would do with it. It's more like a relationship. It's a really intuitive process. So I get the music back and then I just listen to this music for a really long time and pay attention to scenes that play out in my head. And then I start writing the screenplay based on scenes that keep sticking. So I kind of curate this list of specific things for the person, but it's definitely stuff that I've been thinking about. It's just like these little details come in that are real experiences of people or things that happen and then they just become really prominent in the writing of the script. And so I'm constantly just like trying to pay attention and listen to the real things that are going on. So these tuba thefts, talking to like the real band directors and like what their experiences are, those real details will kind of like manifest into this fictional film. There's this, you know, relationship between almost like documenting these real experiences and listening to people's sort of reflections on them and then allowing those to kind of become pillars within the narrative. Because I am so interested in this process of collaboration, whether it be with people or whether it's with a material or whether it's with a musical score that I'm listening to. That element of listening is the most important part. So even if I can't hear it, I can, I could still be listening. <laughs>